<laughs> and George Osborne might be travelling more cheaply these days, but in my view, he still has a lot to answer for. Hello again. This is The Pledge. Now, Greg, before you start, I've got this week's quiz question for the panel. Uh. Which has the longest lifespan? A, the <laughs> mayfly, B, the drone ant, or C, Diane James? Any idea, Greg? Oh, Diane James. I You're absolutely you. right. <laughs> <laughs> Diane James. She lasted a full 18 days yeah. as a UKIP leader. The drone ant survives two weeks, the mayfly one, one day. Time. About the same as Michelle Dubry's New Year's resolution to give up drinking. Yes. <laughs> or Sam Allardyce's role no. in the, at the FA. No. Anyway, it's me. So after six years of austerity, the government, in the shape of the new Chancellor, Philip Hammond, has decided that more pain isn't necessary after all. Remember, George Osborne's original aim was to aggressively cut public spending so the nation's books were balanced by 2015. He missed that by a mile. Then, when it was obvious that he couldn't hit his original target, he changed it to 2020. And that would be achieved by even more cuts in public expenditure. Again, all the signs were he had no chance of achieving that either. Now the plan to balance the books by a set date has been abandoned altogether. So having decimated local government, hacked the budgets of hundreds of publicly funded organisations, cut benefits to millions and damaged the lives of the poorest in this society, the government has, belatedly, decided it was the wrong policy. Thanks a lot, George. Are you saying that you think it's wrong for us, for us to have the target of getting to a, a position where we are not spending much more than we're actually bringing in? Well, it depends where you are in the cycle, in the economy. But at the stage at which George came in, it was a ridiculous decision to cut as savagely as he cut. There were different ways out five years ago. There was another, there was an alternative. If you look at the, the Keynesian economics basically said in, at times of recession, you spend, you spend public money, you spend it on infrastructure and you spend it on other things so that actually that gives you growth in a society. The tax bill, the tax take goes up and you, you get out of it. They went exactly the opposite way, which just keep cutting, cutting, cutting. And the trouble is it hasn't achieved what they set out to do. But even Ed Balls, if I remember rightly, they both had the same strategy of trying to get to, um, you know, cut the deficit, get to a surplus, um, stop the, you know, start cutting the debt. They both parties had that same view. So this isn't just a Tory well, vision it was a, and a Tory it dream. Was a, it was a coalition view. But if you take, if you listen to what Nick Clegg now says, and I read it to you, he said, welfare for Osborne was just a bottomless pit of savings. And it didn't really matter what the human consequences were, because focus groups had shown that the voters they wanted to appeal to were very anti-welfare and therefore there was almost no limit to those anti-welfare prejudices. So, so they chose to do it. They chose to do it by cutting certain things. I mean, local government has been decimated. You yeah. talk to anybody who, in local government who runs mm -hmm. local government, they're almost down to where they can... All they can do is spend money on what is required of them by government, and there's almost nothing Let left. me just pick one cut and just ask you if you think it's wrong then. So, for example, if we talk about the welfare caps and bringing that down to, I think, it's 26,000, do you think that was wrong? Uh, per I, family. Per family. No, I thought that, that, that saved almost nothing. If you actually look at the numbers, that saved nothing. Well, it wasn't Michelle's question. Yeah, but that wasn't Michelle's question. Do you think Michelle, it was wrong? Yeah, that wasn't Michelle, do was wrong? Well, I think there was some logic to it. Ah, I understand so the you logic. Think it was right? And that didn't save much money. So do you actually, think it was right or wrong? No, I said to you, I think there's a logic to it. Personally, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'd have done it, but it's up to This is to why them. the IFS says that the way there, can, there comes a point at which you cut so much that it actually costs you more in the long run. And if you pick some of those benefits cuts, I'll give you two examples from stories that I worked on. One, we've cut legal aid um, in a huge range of cases, like homelessness, right? The cost of making someone homeless is about between 30 and 60,000 pounds a year. The cost of free legal advice to prevent the eviction and help them deal with their arrears, about 1,000 pounds. So, you know, it's a simple sum that actually costs you more to let people to fall into destitution than to provide quite a cheap public service that would prevent them falling into it. Another one is the housing benefit cap, right? People are being moved out of areas where they can no longer afford to live with housing benefit into cheaper areas. I looked at one example where a family of five was moved from um, a North London borough to a coastal area that was much cheaper. <coughs> 
when they got there, no support network, no community. The mother killed herself. All five of her children were then taken into care. The cost of taking children into care compared to the cost of housing them in their community is astronomical. And of course, I'm not going to try and quantify the cost of, of children losing their mother. And these are the kind of things that have really been happening. But, 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 you know, austerity is real. It's yeah. changed people's lives. Look at and it. it's Thank cost you. public money that was never, ever and calculated. It didn't work. Can I just it say? It didn't achieve what they were trying to achieve. Can I just say that taking economics classes from great Dyke, who of course until recently was the FA, who spent $50 million on a bunch of Herberts to run in the England, England football team, is like taking dancing lessons from Ed Balls. If you will accept that's one of the reasons why, when the last government, when the Labour government, sorry, last left, the note was in the, well, there's no money left in the till. Partly global recession, I know, I know factors beyond their control. Partly because they adopted some of the tactics that you want. They spent money they did not have. You can't run your own life like that. Why do you think you can run a government well, like that? Well, but the trouble is it didn't work. You remember that they were going to well, balance the, the books by 2050. No, but you had to do something. But well, logically, is not logically, you would have spent more. I mean, the Keynesian economic, the Keynesian economists would have told you spend more money on on major, which is what this tried. government, which is exactly what this government is now going well, to that's, do. Well, that's that's supposed to be here on, in November. They're, yeah. go yeah. they're going to borrow cheap money to you, invest, cheap money, which is what you money, like, which and, is Keynesian, and invest in, in infrastructure, yeah. and that will. Get more people in work, get them earning more money, paying more tax, and it'll help balance the thing. they could have done that in the beginning the and saved and some instead, of the they've, that they've they're all not this, restoring no, the welfare. I think Michelle's point no, is a really, really good one. The, the, that twenty-six thousand pound cap for, for per, per family, family per, per family. Year. Important to say that. Yeah. That speaks to a culture that needs to be addressed. Sure. Because there, I, I think it was Osborne's words, George Osborne's words. But there, there is a culture of living but, on benefits. But that second and third sure. generation, and that I think must be addressed. It must be addressed, but it's not necessarily anything to do with economic policy, right? Because it didn't save a lot of money. The real truth is what they needed to do was to say, how do we get this economy growing again? How do we get it growing faster? How do we get people, more people in work and how do we get them earning more money so they're going to pay some tax? But does the Keynesian model allow for global recession, which is what was also at the same time? So you've got global recession well, I don't think, and you... I don't think it does, does it? No, but if you go well, back to the 30s where we did adopt the Keynesian model to get out of the recession... You were just reaching 30s. retirement in the 30s, and, and, Yeah, I was, I was. I was in my youth in, it, so, <laughs> uh, in the 30s. It worked. And it worked partly because I have to say... Because the Second World War, but well, that but, was, yeah, but, that but in, which was the boom. It was an incentive for yeah. demand, but somehow we've got. We should be saying, look, this is what you told us. You told us this is what was going to be achieved. But Greg, is there any and point? In, I, I'm not quite sure where you're coming from on this. Are you crying over all the spilt milk no, and all the somebody... wait, 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 Sorry. and over the fact that there was austerity was pointless, or are you angry about the fact that you think a Tory Chancellor is now abandoning austerity? Because I don't think this Tory Chancellor is remotely abandoning austerity. What he's doing is, he's what he calls it, is a fiscal reset. He knows, because the IMF has said, that actually you need to spend for growth, and he is going to invest. But I don't think you're going to see any reversal of the benefit cuts and the paring down of local government or anything like but, that. But I mean, We're going to see some infrastructure work. And just yes, but that's, but that's what, what we could have done five said. years ago. You know, Nick, what you mentioned about they this, didn't, this yeah. whole idea that intergenerational dependence on welfare, you know, the, the figure shows it's actually a tiny number. And the cuts that were made were to working tax credits, remember. That's hitting low-income working people. It's not people who sit at home living off, off public money. So the idea that it's this culture of laziness and not working, dependence on benefits, why do working people even need tax credits to be able to make ends meet? The reason is that income is too low. So I think the idea that we should expect low-income workers to pay the price of austerity, and now we've all acknowledged it didn't even work, Nobody is well, really taking stock of that. We don't know, we don't know what that. state we might have been well, in. It has come down to 90 billion from 145 well, billion over a four-year yes. period. That's so that's not bad. That, that's those not figures. bad. Say those yeah. figures again. Well, I from can't. 145 to 90 billion. 154, 154 billion to 90 billion. Debt so still George did a bit of good. Okay. Okay. I still think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> the Prime Minister asked many big questions at conference, including can Boris Johnson stay on message for a full four days? Well, he did just about. In fact, the three Brexiteers are confident they're up to the job.